As Aquaman 2 sinks below the waves, DC diehards begin the waiting game for a total universe relaunch in 2025, which has everyone asking, where does DC go from here? Harry, all the right here. Although the DC Extended Universe, or DCEU, was never a studio section title, the nickname is being retired in favor of writer-director, co-head honcho, James Gunn's DC Universe, or DCU. Gunn and DC Studios co-chair Peter Safran have big plans for a marvelistic, interconnected universe that has the same actors playing the same roles across films and series, which makes sense considering that Gunn found great success in the MCU with his Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy. Unlike Marvel and its phases, Gunn's DCU will be divided into the entirely novel Chapters, beginning with Numero Uno, subtitled Gods and Monsters, which takes flight in summer 2025 with DC's original deity in blue tights, Superman. What's doing me? Pearl and Hollywood breakout David Corinsweat takes on the Clark Kent role in Superman Legacy, with Rachel Brosnahan as Lois Lane and Skylar Gassanda as Jimmy Olsen. Gunn writes and directs this new spin that sees Superman reconciling his Kryptonian culture with his Earthbound upbringing, which actually sounds similar to Zack Snyder's 2013 launch of the DCEU, Man of Steel. Although Henry Cavill's Superman was treated as an invading alien, and judging by the DCU's Chapter 1 title, David Corinsweat will be seen as a god or maybe a monster. How did you know? Takes one to know one. Rounding out the cast are a duo of arch enemies, Nicholas Holt as Lex Luthor and Sean Gunn as Maxwell Lord. And on the superhero side, Justice Leaguer's Isabella Merced is Hot Girl, and Anthony Kerrigan is Metamorpho. Plus, Maria Gabrielle Del Faria is the Engineer, and Nathan Fillion is the Guy Gardner version of the Green Lantern. Remember those last two names, because we'll circle back around to them as the DCU expands. But first, we need to address the two series slated for 2024 that are technically part of Chapter 1, but are also connected back to the DCEU via the Suicide Squad's feared leader, Amanda Waller, who is still being played by Viola Davis. What the f Although Viola Davis played Waller in David Ayer's Suicide Squad from 2016, both the 2021 soft reboot by James Gunn and his Peacemaker spinoff series with John Cena featured Davis in the role. Davis will play Waller at least twice more in an animated series called Creature Commandos that appears to be a prequel to the Suicide Squad, since it features a monstrous team of outcasts who were first assembled in the comics to fight Nazis during World War II and is being led by Rick Flagg Sr., father of the Suicide Squad leader, Rick Flagg Jr. Frank Grillo voices the senior flag, while David Harbour plays Eric Frankenstein. Zoe Chow is amphibious scientist Nina Mazursky, Alan Tudyk is the radioactive Dr. Phosphorus, and Sean Gunn returns as Weasel, who is a weasel. Davis also gets a titular spinoff of a spinoff called Waller, which takes place after the events of Peacemaker Season 1. The pivot to center this series on her character was made so that Gunn can focus on other DCU films, although he considers the series an appetizer before Superman Legacy. Gunn also promises Peacemaker Season 2 somewhere down the line. I just can't wait till this is all over so I never have to see your stupid dumb face ever again. Okay, but let's get back to the mainline Gods and Monsters series that continues with The Authority, another team of saga that originated outside the DC Comics continuity over at Wildstorm before being folded into DC in 2011. Similar to Suicide Squad, The Authority is a by any means necessary operation that will kill in the name of making the world a safer place, and it's headed up by the liquid machinery-based Angela Spica, aka The Engineer, who will first see played by Maria Gabriela de Faria in Superman Legacy. See? Told you she'd come back. You're going to be mad. But you have to listen to me. Gunn announced three other films that introduced three of the most beloved characters from DC and also Swamp Thing. But let's talk about The Brave and the Bull, a Batman movie that explores Bruce Wayne's fractured relationship with his son, Damian Wayne who takes up the mantle of Robin. The Flash director Andy Muschietti directs the film based in part on Grant Morrison's run on the comics from 2006 to 2013. This Cape Crusader will be entirely separate from Matt Reeves' The Batman sequel with Robert Pattinson that's slated for 2025, as well as the two spin-off series in that universe, The Penguin starring Colin Farrell and a proposed Arkham Asylum series from the Staircase director Antonio Campos. The Brave and the Bold is also separate from Todd Phillips' Joker sequel, which drops in 2024, starring Oscar winners Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga. There is no punchline. It's not a joke. 
The third of those DC darlings is Supergirl, who gets her own film, subtitled Woman of Tomorrow, based on the 2021 comic of the same name. Gunn says this star-spanning epic investigates the rivalry between cousins, Supergirl and Superman, and sounds a bit like his cosmic-bound Guardians trilogy. And I don't scare easily. Lastly, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny director James Mangold is slated to take on a gothic horror film about the origin of Swamp Thing. Mangold, who also helmed dark comic book favorite Logan, has a Bob Dylan biopic with Timothy Chalamet and a Star Wars film on his dance card before he gets to Swamp Thing, but Gunn and Safran pledge that this is a passion project for the writer-director. Much beauty in Swamp, if you only look. Three more series are in development for Chapter 1, including Lanterns, which is a true detective-style mystery series focusing on Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart, but also features Nathan Fillion returning as the Guy Gardner Green Lantern from Superman Legacy. See? It's all connected. There's also the Game of Thrones-inspired political drama Paradise Lost, which takes place on Wonder Woman's home island, Themyscira, prior to Diana's birth, and an outright comedy series based on the disgraced wannabe, Booster Gold, who time travels to the present day and uses future tech to pose as a superhero. The greatest hero you've never heard of. Until the cop. And that's everything DC has in store. Unless that online campaign for Netflix to buy the rights to the DCEU so that Zack Snyder can finish his Justice League sequel is successful, but that's about as likely as George Clooney returning as Batman. Again. What's wrong with you?